So what you see here is the morning after yesterday. Uh, you see canoes that were left over from the water protectors yesterday. You see the water uh, that's kind of starting to get a little uh, frozen. And you see Dakota Access Pipeline workers here starting to bring over coils for what looks like a fence. Uh, the fence they're going to be building uh, right at the base of the mountain. Again, this is the mountain where the Native Americans' uh, ancestors are buried. And they're now taking the extreme measure to build a fence so that if water protectors build a bridge to get uh, back over there to pray, which is what they did yesterday, uh, they weren't violent. They were just lined up in the hundreds, uh, praying peacefully with signs. Uh, essentially, they are building a fortress around the Native Americans' ancestral burial ground so that the Native Americans cannot go pray where their ancestors are buried. This is militarized police at the top of the mountain. They've been there for weeks, and they are continuing to disrespect, desecrate where the Native Americans' ancestors are buried, now taking the added measure of building what looks like a barrier, a fence, uh, some type of uh, blockade so that Natives can't get anywhere near uh, their ancestors' burial ground. Uh, this will surely uh, only escalate tensions here between the natives and these security forces. We should also remind that this area is Army Corps land. That would be federal government land. And the Dakota Access Pipeline workers, as well as the state police, are not supposed to be on Army Corps land. Uh, that's the Missouri River, Lake Oahe, is Army Corps land. That's what they are all fighting over. Uh, Lake Oahe is the main water source for 20 million people. And these police officers who are supposed to be uh, enforcing the law are breaking the law. You could see the DAPO worker has broke the canoe into in half. So you're seeing them building all around uh, a thick blockade of razor wire, uh, the water, and at the base of essentially a, a giant burial ground. So these same people who surely wouldn't like uh, pipelines or people disturbing where their ancestors are buried have no problem doing it to Native American land. Of course, that's a ultimate disrespect, but it's something that we expect from these, from these inhuman oil robots, you know? It's something that we've come to expect. They have no concern of any, of any history or morals or humanity. They're inhuman. Uh, seeing this razor wire go up represents a lot, you know. They're uh, basically guarding something that is so sacred to them that they have to go to this, this extent. How can this thing even be happening in America, you know? I'm a veteran of the United States Army invasion of Panama in 1988. I was on the force of the United States Army we went in there to, um, to get Noriega. Um, we did it was a major police action, more or less. And I remember seeing the faces of those Panamanians as we rolled in there. There was some fear. There was some. There was some joy on theirs. Oh, there was fear in my eyes for sure. I didn't know what to expect. So, anyways, to jump forward 30 years, and here I am on the other side of that, of that force, you know. I'm on the resistance side. You can lock us up at the gates of hell and we won't back down. We will stand our ground. Way high, way high, oh. No dapple, we won't back down. Way high, way high.